Alright, welcome everyone. In this video we're going to go a little bit over the basics of how to get your rack height um, for a competition. So there's lots of different types of racks out there that are used. The one we're going to go over now is a ER rack. Um, a lot of the stuff for the competition racks are the same, other than maybe just some of the uh, differences in hole sizing. So your rack height number will be a little bit different depending on the brand, but this overall process of how to get your rack heights um, is the same. So we have two different hooks. We have one up here that's used to get for the squat and then one down here used to get for the bench. So for right now, we got everything set up for the squat. So we're gonna show how to get your rack height um, for the squat. So I'm gonna grab the camera and come around so you can get a little closer shot and see what's going on as far as changing the height. All right, so right now you can kind of see the view from the front of the rack. So we got the bar here up in the squat hook and you'll see here on the inside, we got the different holes with the, the numbers. Same thing on this right side, the numbers are on the inside on this model. For some of them, the numbers might be on the back side or even on both the inside and outside. So you just wanna look and see where the numbers are. And then the number is gonna be where the pin is in. So here we're on 18 right now on both sides. So you wanna make sure you're on the same number on both so it's even, all right? Then you have the extra pin which you use to adjust the number. So you don't want to put it in this hole right above or below it, because if we're in the hole right above it or below it, then the jack that we have here used to jack it up is not going to fit. All right, so we always want at least one hole spacing between in order to adjust. So here, if we do 16 and 18, then the jack will be able to fit in there to adjust your rack height. All right, so you want to use this extra pin to be able to adjust up or down. So I'll first explain it and then I'll show you. So if you want to adjust this from 18 to something bigger, 19 or 20, then you would push up on this pin and then switch this pin to what you need. And then if you want to go down, say you want to go down from 18 to 13, then you push up on this pin with the jack and then you pull this pin out and you slowly bring it down to the 13. All right, so now I'm gonna set up in the camera and go over an example of changing it with those numbers that I just said. All right, so right now I'm on the back side of the rack. We have the pin in 18 and then we have the extra pin that I'm gonna to use to adjust with on 13. So like I said, if you want to go up and say we want to go up to 20, we bring this jack up, and then we go to the 13, we push up on it, and now we can adjust and we can go to our 20. Put this pin in the 20, and then lower it down, and bring your jack back down. So now we just went from the 18 hole to the 20 hole. So now if we want to come down, let's say from 20 all the way down to 13, again we're going to grab the 13, and we're going to push up with the jack, and then we're going to pull this completely out and slowly lower it down all the way down to 13. So now it's all the way down to 13. You can put your extra pin wherever you want on 10 in case you want to like make another adjustment or there's also some of them have the little reserve spot here that you can just put it for storage. Um, but again, now if we want to go back up, so I put it now for the 10 hole and I just grab the 10 hole just to push up on it. So now I can push up and, and I can go up. Depending on where you put the, the pin that you're using to adjust up or down, the rack's only going to go up so far based on the jack. So here I can only go up to 17. So if I wanted to go past 17, then I have to just do two adjustments. So here I go up to 17, and then I can move this pin somewhere else again. Say so I want to move it back to 13, and then push up on the 13, and then now I can go further up to my 20. So sometimes you have to do two adjustments depending on how far of a change you're doing, and sometimes you can just do it with one adjustment. The other option is if you have the bar on here with no weight on there, since there's no weight, it's pretty easy to just lift this up without using the jack. The jack is very helpful when there's a lot of weight on the bar. But if you just want to lift with your hand on this, you can lift and then you can adjust, adjust the whole sizing by hand with just one pin. And then you can move it up or down. So with just the, the empty bar on there, uh, it's easy to do that. And then whatever you do on the one side, you want to make sure you're also doing it on the other side 
That way you have the, uh, the bar even. If you do have any weights on there, you wanna make sure you also have the collars on there and tight, because if you start adjusting one side a big distance, then you see the bar is going to be angled and it's possible that the weights will fall off the side. So you want to make sure you have the collars on there or you have a buddy on the other side and you're making the adjustments together. That way the weights don't fall off. All right, another feature that you can do on squat. So if we're looking from here from the front, you'll see that the rack and the, uh, the bar, where the end of the bar is the weights, is a very little space to grab. So if you're someone who does grab wide on squat, or if you want to have the plates not possibly hit the rack, you can also have the rack turned in. So down here at the very bottom, all right, we got this that we can lift up, and this allows us to bring the rack in. So you, once you pull on the upright, now the upright gets angled in, and then if we come back up to the top, now you can see the upright is angled in, and there's more space here to grab. All right, and you can do the same thing on the other side or you can leave one upright and one turned in if you want. Some people just like having one side in, but if you want to have both sides turned in, lift, lift that up, pull it in, and now we got this side turned in. And so now you have the ability to grab, grab wider out and also reduce the uh, risk of the plates hitting the upright when you're walking out. So when you get your squat rack height, you'll be giving them the number here. So here will be 18. That's the one that it's on. This one is just for adjustment and you can also put it in here. So this is the number you give squat rack height 18. And then if you want um, one side in or both sides in, you can say both sides in, or you can say left in, or you can say right in. Um, if you just want the standard, then you just leave it as out. Um, and if you want to adjust this, again, if you want to go back out, you lift this up, push it, put it back down. Same thing with the other side. Lift this up, push it, put it back down. And then now we're back to the standard out position. All right, so that's what you want to do for getting your rack hyper squat. What number you pick on is based on uh, your height, your bar position, your shoes, and how comfortable you feel if you like a small unrack if you like a big unrack then you have to just make the adjustment and try and mimic what you do in the gym all right so now we're going to set up for the bench and go over getting the rack heights for the bench all right we're all set up now for the bench so we can go over the rack heights for the bench you see the bench now is uh, in the rack we also have these safeties here that we don't have for squat that we have for bench and like i said at the beginning now we have the bar and the bench hook versus the squat hook so as far as getting your rack height for the bench you just put it in this hook and then the adjustments on the rack are going to be the same. You, you set the pin above and then you make the adjustment whether you want to come up or down. Uh, make sure you're balanced on both sides if you have the weights on there or you have a collar on there so you don't tip the, the weights over and dump everything. Um, and then just how you like to take it out depends on whether you like to take out a lot of the weight or a small amount. Um, the difference is going to be a couple things. One would be the safety. We call these face savers. So these are meant to protect your face and throat. If for some reason something happens, the bar slips out or something, you tear something, and we have the, the spotters there, but if something happens and it drops, this will be your last line of protection. So you wanna make sure you're getting this set up to a point where it protects your face and your throat, but it's not gonna get in the way of the bar touching your chest, okay? So we'll go over that, and that has numbers on the inside. Sometimes we'll have it on the outside. Um, sometimes we'll even have it over here. On this one, I have it set up on the inside over here and on the inside on this right one as well. All right, and then the other thing would be if you need foot blocks for bench press, if you wanna put your feet up on blocks, um, competitions will have different height blocks set up either in inches or centimeters. So it might be like a two inch block, a five inch block and a big 10 inch block. So depending on what they have at the competition, then you can also test those out and that'll be what you give as part of your rack height. So I just want to go over real quick an example of this face saver. So if I were to take this bar out all right, and bring it down to my chest, you'll see I don't hit the safeties. So I'm able to touch my chest and do a full rep. But if for some reason I lose it towards my face, this is going to protect my face. So it's not going to get in the way of hitting my face of me doing the rep, but it's going to protect my face and throat. So 
you want to make adjustments to this, so there's no weight on this, you can just lift this up and you will adjust it to whatever hole you want. If you need it lower, you can go all the way down here, down to three, get it nice and low. And if you're a bigger person and you need it up high, you can bring it up high. This one for, is just on 12 and you can adjust it to what you need. Um, what I had it set to for myself was on eight, which just kept enough space to not touch my chest, but protecting my face and throat. And I can even do an adjustment and test out maybe with seven, it'd be a little bit more spacious to make sure that I'm not hitting the safeties during my rep. Um, and then like I said, you test out your foot blocks. All right, so that would be getting your rack height for bench. All right, so the last thing I just wanted to go over is this is kind of like a standard rack height sheet you might see at a competition. Um, so these are some of the things we went over and that you would be filling out on the sheet. So you have your name and the first thing is the squat rack. So that's the first rack height I went over when we did the pin adjustments with the bar and the top hook for squat. Um, so you want to make sure you look at what the number is for the bottom pin that's in there and that's what you would write down. Then you have squat in slash out. So that would be when we made the adjustment where you can have the uprights being in um, or you can leave it out which is the standard. So you can do out, you can do in, you can also do just left in or just right in if you only wanted one of the uprights in. So those would be your options there. Then we went on and we set up for bench press. So this bench rack would be the same thing as the squat, just with the bar now in the bench hooks. So you'd get your rack height for bench. And then this is the safety, the, or some of the face savers that we were going over. So you figure out what the safety height is to uh, protect your face and throat. And that's the number you'd put there. And then we went over the foot blocks, depending on what they're offering. You put in there maybe small, medium, large, or you put in five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, or you might put in there two inches, five inches, 10 inches, depending on what they have there. And then last thing, you or your coach will just sign off on it saying that these are the rack heights that you got and these are what you agreed to. All right, I hope that video helps you out with figuring out how to get your rack heights at the competition. Make sure you're getting it specifically on the competition rack that's used on the platform or the same brand if it's used on the warm-up room or on the side. Um, like I said, the different brands um, have sometimes different hole sizing. So sometimes a 13 on uh, one brand is going to be way different than 13 on another brand. And then if you just use a regular power rack um, uh, or like power cage uh, at your gym, then whatever rack height there is going to be completely different than what's here. So you don't want to use what's there. You just want to come to the competition and use the competition rack and adjust it for what feels comfortable for you for your squat and your bench and then also just figure out whether you like the racks in the safety and the foot blocks all right hope that helps